What is good right today? We are back with a brand new AEW versus WWE action figure review style video. As you guys know, we do have the brand new AEW and Match Series number 10 Edge figure over here, Adam Copeland. And we have an Elite Edge over here that we're going to do some comparisons to the video, battle it out, see who the winner is. But the thing about it is I got my shipment of Unmatched Series 10 from Ringside Collectibles, and my shipment was all kind of jumbled. I had two Adam Copelands, two Kyle O'Reilly's, no Adam Cole. I did get the Bucks. I didn't get Kenny Omega, so my box was just a bit shuffled. Fold, I guess. And I didn't really want to pair Edge with anybody else other than Adam Cole. So I figured this would just make for a one one-off video of the Edge figure. Seeing what his first AEW figure is like. Comparing it to an Elite of his. He has a long-standing history with WWE and their Elite figures. And this is our first ever Adam Copeland Edge style figure here from AEW and Jazzwear. So it should be fun, man. We're going to dive into the details of the thing, of course. Break it down. See how he compares. But anyways, man. We do have our front viewing window here. We're going to get into it. It is unmatched. It's kind of unreal that we have an Adam Copeland AEW figure. You can see him there. Kind of looks like the WWE figure right there on the side. Daniel Bryan torso. What a crock of shish. I see some abs in there, so that's good. If you guys want to grab this figure, though, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. You have the rest of the figures in the wave. Definitely going to be tracking down the rest of these. I do believe Adam Cole and the Kenny Omega are on the way there. I did get the bucks again. I am going to finish off, you know, these reviews and getting them done, but for now, this is all we have is the Adam Copeland. But we're going to break it down see what he's all about, man. But with that being said, let's crack this Adam Copeland out of the packaging, find out what it's about, and then we will compare it together with our WWE Elite Edge and see who the winner is down below. So here's our first AEW Edge figure out of the packaging, and I have a few complaints about the figure straight out. I already, I already am complaining. I'm already complaining. As you guys know, you, you know I love to complain. But in all seriousness, I think I'm pretty fair, I think. I think everything that I talk about in these videos is pretty detailed. I'm giving you all the nuts and bolts. I give you all the details, man. I don't leave anything out, or at least I don't try to. I want to dive in and discuss everything here. But what we're going to do is dive into the Edge accessories that you get, and then we'll take a closer look at the figure, how it compares to the Elite, and just see who is going to win this battle that that we have going on here today between the AEW and Match 10 Edge and then of course the WWE Elite or Mattel counterpart of Edge or Adam Copeland. So here's everything you get with the AEW Unmatched Series 10 Edge or Adam Copeland figure. You get some entrance gear and you do get the interchangeable hands and he also came with some removable elbow pads but I don't really count that as accessories really. I feel like that's just part of the course of the figure, kind of a part of the figure here but here is our entrance vest as you guys can see and it looks like one of his old entrance coats with the, the bottom half of it kind of cut off and the sleeves cut off which I'm sure that's what this was made out of at least I would think so but on the back it looks cool because it does say rated R era which is weird because didn't Mattel didn't they have to change their logo you guys remember when they took the box off of the R or something like that and they kind of ran into some issues is anybody remembering that remember when they only had the R there was no box around it and apparently there was some issue with it being related to the movie rating system or something like that I can't remember off the top of the dome but maybe I'm tripping but it does look good here and this doesn't really bother me that much. You know, we always talk about the rubber accessories versus the cloth goods, but it really doesn't bother me because it's it's not going to hinder any articulation. You know, the ab crunch isn't going to be great, but it's not that bad. It's not going to directly hinder anything. The arms can still move. He can articulate. He can move around. It's not one of those, you know, those big ass rubber jackets that's like a straight, you know, a straight jacket where you can't move at all. So that's nice. But it has a lot of detailing here on the front. All this is sculpted on. It looks good. Good paint apps. Good red paint in there as well. I like it. I like it a lot. You even have the era down there. Pretty cool stuff. I think they did a good job on this entrance vest. Now, his interchangeable hands are kind of awkward or weird here. The right hand is this black taped hand, and then the left hand is a blank hand or a non-taped hand, but the left hand has this weird sort of grabbing kind of, uh, like, I don't know, like he's going to, I don't know, it looks like he, I, I don't even know, man. It's like he's telling somebody to pay up a little bit, or I don't know, like uh, reaching out to grab something, but these are not the same hand. You can tell that they're slightly different, and I think this is a new hand mold. I don't think we've ever seen this before, so it's a little bit weird. They don't match, as you can see this one's kind of got a tighter grip or a more, more relaxed hand and then this one kind of is like he's reaching out so I don't know kind of a weird pairing of hands and then when you get to the devil horns or the rockstar style hands you do have the you know they're kind of undersized like we've seen from more signature hands from AEW I don't know why the normal hands are a normal size and then the signature hands are always smaller for some reason but the right hand has the black hand tape which is consistent it does have a skin tone peg though and then the left hand doesn't have any hand tape whatsoever so you do get some interchangeable hands but nothing crazy but at least you get the bare minimum 
them here when it comes to the interchangeable hands. So getting into the Adam Copeland at the top of this head sculpt, I think the likeness is pretty good, especially Edge or Adam Copeland in his older age. I think they did a pretty good job here. Kind of a weird expression, you know, he's just kind of smirking right here, just a relaxed face. I could have swore, did he not have a screaming head sculpt that was sculpted out or grayed out rendered or something like that? But I do like the hair. His hair kind of looks like my dad's hair a little bit. I don't know. He's look, he kind of looks like my dad a little bit. Is he my dad? A dad? Hair color looks good with the dark brown and everything. I think they did a good job on the beard and the likeness is pretty good. I think it does look like Edge. That I think it looks like Copeland. I think they did a good job there and that that's nice. We're going to get into the articulation in a moment, but this is probably, I don't know, I feel like this is going to be kind of a controversial take. Now, I know that Edge is pretty big or Adam Copeland is very tall, but this torso is very ginormous. I do like that it's ripped up. I like that it has this, this build because he is, he's pretty jacked, you know, ever since he came back to the company before he returned to WWE. He got in hella shape. He, he looks very good, especially in his age. I think he looks fantastic. He's got the stomach and chest hair in there, which is, I feel like, left off of a lot of Mattel figures nowadays, and that's such an underrated detail of a figure that really makes it pop when you see chest hair on a figure. I don't know, something about that just really brings the figure to life, but you can see here on the side, he does have all of his tattoos, which look good, and they, they look damn good. I think they did a really good job printing the tattoos on here. You can see those large elbow pads. It's kind of weird. I, I've seen these tattoos. I've always seen them on Mattel figures, so it kind of trips me out, but he does have the double jointed arms in there, and he even has his cross tattoo on this forearm, and he also has his other tattoo on this forearm, which is pretty good. But they got all the tattoos in there, which is crazy. I mean, it's just wild to think that we have a Adam Copeland in a different, you know, action figure company here, but going down to the tights, we do have the red tights, which look good. You have the skull logos, you have the smoking skulls, or the, you know, you have the vehicle. It says Copeland. He's got the A up there. Kind of an anarchy-looking logo. Very cool, man. Just very cool all over the place. It kind of reminds me, of, I don't know, these tights are giving me a lot of School of Rock vibes or something. You know, like, you know, Guns and Roses, sort of, and I don't know, it just kind of reminds me of School of Rock, but he has the rated R logos on the knee pads, which look very, very good there. All the graphics look good, and then the kick pads look good, too, with the same smoking style, you know, lightning bolts and the skulls and the A. It looks very, very good, and I like this kick pad mold. It feels good in hand. Now, before we bring the Elite in here for comparison, I am going to, I'm going to pull the elbow pads up just a little. They are very big. They're very big, but I mean, they are kind of, I don't know, they probably made them a little bit too oversized, but in terms of this Adam Copeland figure, you can kind of see how damn big he is, man. I mean, he's pretty big, but as far as articulation, he can look down a pretty good bit. The beard doesn't really impede that. Looking up, though, because he does have kind of a rat tail, is a little bit obscure, and the ab crunch is pretty good. I find that you get a pretty good amount of movement there. Of course, the shoulders go above 90. Full rotation, bicep swivel, double-jointed arm. That's not going to really happen because of the elbow pads here, but the, the wrists do hinge up and down and rotate, of course, and then he is on ball joints, but the kick is a little bit weird. It can kick forward, but it kind of goes to the side a little bit. You don't really get a straight kick forward, and there are some hindrances here on the upper leg. He can do the splits. He has a thigh cut as well. It's a bit tight right there. Hold up now. God in heaven. Thigh cut is extremely tight. There it goes. Finally got it. Thigh cut is good, though. You do have a double jointed knee. Kick pad rotation. Ankle rocker is a bit weird as well, but it does go down and up. And the real thing that my biggest issue here is that you'll see when I compared this one to the Mattel, and the reason that this figure I think is going to be hindered unless you compare it to some other things, is going to be, if you take this Adam Copeland and put it up to an edge elite, it is going to be the size. I mean, we all know that Jazzware has kind of struggled with the scaling ever since the beginning. I remember with Series 1, we were really excited because it did scale well. I mean, even if you look at guys like Darby Allen, you look at the Kenny Omegas of the world, you look at the Young Bucks, a lot of those talents that were in Series 1 and 2, maybe outside of John Moxley or Dustin Rhodes, the scale's been pretty good. They, they scale really, really well with WWE Elites, which I think should be your top priority. I would make that my top priority. Getting the scaling right, because people, they're going to collect their WWE Elites, like period. They're going to collect those WWE Elites. It's the most popular wrestling action figure brand. Why wouldn't you capitalize on that market by making every making sure every single AEW figure is to scale with that line so that people can mingle their collections together? I know for one, I would completely, if I were not a crazy consumer in this space, I don't think that I would buy any figure that was crazy out of scale. I do buy a lot of AEW figures. I review them here on the channel. But if I didn't have a channel and I didn't have this place where people come to see these action figures, there are a lot of figures that I probably would have skipped out on and never bought or purchased or got in my collection simply because the scaling was wrong. And you will see here that that is the case here with this edge. I mean, this edge is towering over this other edge. And I do want to get some other figures in here for comparison. But if I if I compare these two, I certainly, if I had to, you know, look at both figures and kind of make my judgments, I do like the elbow pads better on the Mattel. 
hell. I do like the torso choice here in terms of the ripped upness. I don't know why Mattel, even though, you know, Ed, Adam Copeland, he got in shape, he got in hella shape. Why did they not ever switch to the Cesaro torso right here? This is an Elite 23 Cesaro torso. This looks so much better. This is how the figure originally came. I did put a more modern head sculpt on there just for the sake of the video. But you can see how much better the figure looks when you torso swap it. It just looks so much better. So much more likeness. It has the chest hair and the stomach hair. I like everything else outside of the torso choice. I just think that this is just too money. It looks too good. And it was a hell of missed opportunity there. But if you really want to, I mean, these gears are very similar. Look at these gears right here. Very, very similar. You have the red and the rated R and everything going down. And this head sculpt was abysmal. I hate the Ultimate Edge. I think it was such a miss. But I don't know, man. At the end of the day, I think if you were to combine these figures together, it would be the perfect edge. I do want to grab another edge figure real quick so you can see the double jointed arm comparison as well. And again, man, this is the Elite 94 Edge, I think it was. I love the white gear, but I think this head sculpt came on the Elite 102 Edge, or maybe it was Elite 101. Nonetheless, never upgrading that torso to a more ripped up torso or adding stomach hair, chest hair really just leaves the figure lacking a lot, even though it's a cool fix up and everything. I just, I don't like the scale of the figure, but in terms of how good it feels in hand and how well it can pose around, it probably, I think you'd be able to do a lot of different things. I mean, I know the elbow pads hinder it because they're so massive in thickness, but, and then bringing mocks in here so you can kind of see the comparison and scale. These guys, I think in real life, are about the same height, and they are scaling well here together, but the John Moxley figure, how good it looks. It's a great head sculpt. It's a great formula. I know it gets loose and things like that, but if that guy was in perfect scale, it would help so much, man. I think scaling is one of the biggest issues that the Jazzwares line faces, but at the end of the day, if I had to choose between the most recent double joint, you know, the Judgment Day Edge and then this white edge. This white edge is probably my favorite edge that Mattel's ever done, even though I do love the throwback edges, of course. Never got the damn Ruthless Aggression Elite. Still missing that one, by the way. God dang, what a, what a great figure. If I had to choose at the end of the day, I would pick the Elite 94 edge over this more modern, or I would select the Elite 83 edge, I think it was, which was an abysmal wave, by the way. I think I would take the Elite edge over the Jazzwear simply for the scaling issue. The scaling issue is a big deal for me. Even though I really like some of the executions here, I think the likeness is good and everything, I think the, uh, the Elite does win. I think the Elite wins in this case. I don't remember who won Samoa Joe in the AEW Unrivaled Samoa Joe versus WWE Elite, but at the end of the day, I would go with the Mattel Elite. But I think that pretty much wraps up today's video for the Edge figure, man. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. I did want to put up a review of it just because, again, my shipment was a little bit messed up with my Unmatched Series 10. I think I'm going to combine Kenny Omega and the Bucks together, and then we'll see about the rest of the series. My shipment getting a little messed up kind of, kind of messed up the flow of the videos there, so I do apologize for that. But I also want to review the LWF 5 pack that's coming in very soon. It should have, I thought it was going to arrive a day. Apparently it's going to arrive tomorrow, so I should be able to get that review up on tomorrow. It'll be the LWO Mattel Creations 5 pack. Hopefully you guys will want to see that one. But at the end of the day, man, if you guys want to grab this edge, you can do so over at Ringside Collectibles. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves for 10%. I personally would just go after the Elites. But what do I know, Brad? What do I know? But a huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate all those fellas. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support as always. Thank you guys so very much for everything that you guys do for me on a monthly basis. You guys are incredible. Thank you guys so very much as always. Enjoy. Leave me all of your thoughts on this Adam Copeland Edge figure down in the comment section below. Let me know which one you think is better down below as well. But I'm getting out, man. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.